Hey guys! A couple of months ago I compared 11 different Zigbee temperature and humidity sensors to figure out which one is the best for your home automation. And that video is there. Unfortunately, this wasn't included because it got only released today and it's only today I get to talk about it. This is son of SNZB02D and I'm pretty sure D stands for display. Now this is the second temperature and humidity sensor from ID.ed. The first one was the one without the display and I've been using it since because it's pretty good despite being very very affordable. And if you watched that video about me comparing different temperature sensors you know that I'm a sucker for a nice sensor with a display. For example like this one from Agara. This one comes with e-ink so it's extra plus points. However it is extremely expensive mostly because e-inks aren't cheap. So here comes a middle ground, a Sonoff sensor, Zigbee 3.0 sensor, with an LCD display. And straight out of the box it manages to impress me, mostly because how simplistic the design is, but it works so well. There is a magnetic cradle that you can attach pretty much anywhere, thanks to the 3M tape. And that way you can either just slot the sensor and not take it with you, should you desire. And as the sensor has magnets built in, you can simply attach it to magnetic surfaces as well. But if that's not your style and you just want that sensor to be on your shelf, simply flip back the stand, which is included at the back of the device, and you'll have your sensor on your shelf. So that's at the back. In the front we have LCD display. It doesn't have a highlight so you won't be able to see it at night. However, the lettering is quite big so you can see the temperature and humidity. So you can see the temperature and humidity from far away. It offers Celsius and Fahrenheit in terms of units. And it additionally has uh, some special icons including the battery indicator, range, but also conditions wet, dry, cold, and well, what's the positive called? Hot, that's the one. Just like the original son of Zigbee sensor, it uses the same CR2450 coin cell battery. It's one of those thicker ones, so the idea being that they're gonna last much longer. But when I could have my first complaint is that the sensor is pretty big and I wish IKEA would include a second battery there for even longer battery life. I mean, they have all the space in the world on this sensor. Do remember that this is an indoor sensor. It's not supposed to be used outside, and even though the temperature range starts from minus 9 to plus 60, even in UK, I managed to experience higher temperatures uh, during the heat wave, like 69 in my conservatory, and lower temperatures during the, well, terrible freezing temperatures in winter. But on the plus side, some of claims quite high degree of accuracy, so let's try to verify that. Let's actually dive inside and see what's what. The device is surprisingly easy to open. It took me only a couple of seconds to get inside and inspect the PCB. Now to my surprise, it's not a repackaged original son of Zigbee. It's a completely new hardware. To communicate with Zigbee 3.0, it uses EFR32 MG22. Now I was trying to get some information whether this IC supports thread or not and whether this sensor alone have a chance to be compatible with Matter, but my searches came up inconclusive, at least for now. On the sensor size we have SM60 which is a pretty good sensor with accuracy of 0.2% when it comes to temperature and 2% when it comes to humidity. So that's decent. Now that we know that this is brand new hardware, let's uh, assemble it back and start testing it with Ewelink app. Now this is a Zigbee one, so you're probably gonna need one of these. This is a Son of Zigbee Bridge, the original, not the Pro version, and I've used that for testing. It pairs immediately and I had no problem adding it to my Ewelink ecosystem. Now one note, it looks very similar to other Zigbee temperature sensors, so it might take you a moment to figure out which one is which. So if you don't know which one is which, go to the device settings and you'll find comfort settings. Those are the settings that are responsible for displaying extra icons. You can specify them manually or choose one of the presets like, for example, uh, your special settings for cigar room. I mean, I don't have a cigar room. Or wine cellar. I might, I might need to rethink my wine cellar then. Anyway, those are there for you 
And additionally, you can also set your limits for uh, alert and notifications, just in case you want to monitor whether it's getting too hot or too cold. Speaking of data, the current temperature and humidity is available in EWILINK app. Now, if you use uh, external ecosystems like Google Home or Alexa, then you will find that only temperature is available, humidity isn't, unfortunately. But when it comes to historical data, well, this is where it gets a little bit worse because that data is aggregated to an average value over an hour. Now, that hour frequency isn't enough to use that historical data for anything practical. It gives you kind of an overview what was going on during the day. But if you were hoping to use the data to figure out how your heating is working, then you'll be disappointed. There is a solution to that, as the EWILINK has API, there's a video about it here, and you could e extract the current temperature and humidity at your own interval, providing you're willing to save it yourself somewhere. Running this sensor alongside Agara TVOC confirms that it's very accurate. I mean, both sensors were reporting the same temperature with a marginally difference uh, in humidity, which is to be expected, to be honest, because when you think about the accuracy of the humidity part, it's slightly more forgiving. I know what you're going to ask next. Can you use this Zigbee sensor in different ecosystems? The answer is yes and no. I managed to pair it with a Tuya Zigbee Hub and the device was reporting values OK, except for battery. For some reason the battery wasn't reporting as it's supposed to. Another thing that I couldn't do in Tuya was to set uh, limits uh, to display those special icons or change the units for your temperature. So those things weren't working great. Then I decided to switch to Agara ecosystem and try to pair it with Agara 3.0 Zigbee Hub. Unfortunately, the device simply refused to connect. So, yeah, your experience will highly depend on what kind of ecosystem you've got and what hardware you're running. But the best possible experience you're probably going to have with a custom coordinator, and that's what we're going to talk next. I've used it with Node-RED and Zigbee 2MQTT because that's the best way to figure out how responsive the sensor is and provide you with a little bit more information about it. I've used my setup with Grafana and InfluxDB to chart all the temperatures over 24 hours and try to figure out what are the sensor strength. And as this is a brand new device, it wasn't supported by default. I mean, it paired okay, but first I had to dive in into converters, find the file responsible for Sonoff devices and add my model number to existing Sonoff because, well, let's face it, they report exactly the same thing. Once that was changed and saved, my sensor started to report the temperature and humidity OK, including link quality and battery. Over the course of 24 hours, I quickly discovered what are the strong points of this sensor. And as you can see from this graph, well, sensor reports back once every 15 to 20 minutes when the temperature is relatively even. That frequency increases when the temperature changes more suddenly. To validate that, I simply blew a warm and moist air onto the sensor and it responded within 10 seconds. So that's very responsive in my opinion. After switching over to the heating mode, I quickly discovered that also the sensor would report back every 0.2 degree of Celsius. So if you are hoping to get a really frequent data based on the temperature changes, then this is the right sensor for you. And I know some of you will be worried about that uh, once every 15 to 20 minutes responsiveness, but don't be worried. If the temperature doesn't change, you actually don't need frequent responses. I know it's kind of nice thing to have in your head, but trust me, you will benefit from a longer battery life, which you're gonna appreciate it more. Now that you know pretty much everything there is about this sensor, you're probably wondering how much do you have to pay for it? It is available right now for $12.99 with battery. And that's a really good deal, considering all the sensors available out there. So if you're looking for one and you like what you see right now, in the description of this video, you're gonna find a link to this sensor, which will tell ITA that I've sent you, which is quite important. Big thanks to ITA for sending me the gadget early so I could talk about it on the release day. That way you can make an informed decision whether you to buy it or to skip it. As for now, <laughs> you know how it works. If you want to know what's next, then I do not have a posting schedule. You know how YouTube works. However, take a look at my social links, follow me there, and 
get the conversation started. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.